Hi, this is Juan from WantTutors.com. Welcome to my totally free office hours. Today we're working on the Living Environment Regions for January 2017. If you want to access these exams anywhere in the world, go to nysedregions.org and down here you click on the appropriate link. All right, let's get to work. Here's problem 12. Uh, the survival of at least a few members of a population after a major environmental change is most dependent on, the po one, the population having an individual that is adapted to the original environment, two, the population having an individual that is adapted to great changes in the temperature in its environment, Three, variations in many different traits in many individuals in the population. Or four, no variations in the color of the fur, skin, or feathers of the individuals in the population. Well, try the problem on your own. Guess the answer or do whatever you can to try to get the right answer. Try really hard to get the right answer and then watch the video. Never, never watch the video without trying first. Um, let's see what we can do. Uh, so we want survival of at least a few members of the population after a major environmental change. Think about catastrophe. Think about anything, forest fire. Think about uh, trees being cut down. Think about a new city being erected. Uh, many, many things can can be considered massive, major environmental changes. What can allow a species to survive in the new area? Let's see. Number one, a population, a population having an individual that is adapted to the original environment. Well, uh, this is not this is not the case because the thing is that one individual, you, usually a species has many of these, right? Has many individuals adapted to the original environment. And what what will those adaptions help if they happen to not coincide with the adapt uh, with the adaptations needed? Uh, sorry, I said adaptions uh, with the ad adaptations needed for the new environment, right? Uh, if a if a species has white fur and suddenly it doesn't snow in an area, having that white fur might not help so much. Vers vice versa, if a species has brown fur, suddenly it gets cold and snows, uh, then that that for allows that th that member to become more visible, right? So uh, being adapted to the original environment doesn't necessarily help you for the new environment, especially if it's a major change. Uh, the second one, um, the population having an individual, an individual. See, I just don't like the, the fact that it's an individual. That's a little risky. Suppose you have one individual that's perfect for the new environment, but that one one individual dies, right? Most dependent on, right? We're looking for most dependent on. So an individual that is adapted to great changes in the temperature, and this is only one possibility. This is only one, one possibility. Because I mentioned situations where the temperature changes. What if it was a uh, the trees uh, were cut, a forest fire came through, all the trees, all the large trees were eliminated. Suddenly the canopy that that animals used to use is no longer there right that's not even a temperature thing yes the fire heats things up but once the fire goes away everything returns to a normal temperature uh so that's not it uh let's, so let's cross these out excuse me <coughs> i have a little bit of a cold and allergy so i apologize in advance from coughing and sniffling and then i sound nasally so the next one variations in many different traits in many individuals in the population. That might seem like something that might or might not help, but think about what that means. That means that you have, let's say, a lot of members of the species that have a lot of adaptations that aren't quite necessarily useful for the current uh, environment. But if the environment changes a little, suddenly a certain uh, a certain trait might be beneficial in the new environment. So this is what's called genetic diversity. Diversity. Well, it's not quite. This is actually phenotypic diversity. That's what it really is. But if, uh, you know, some, let's say, monkeys are large, some are small, and suddenly uh, the amount of food available go uh, is decreased and the small monkeys have 
less need for food. They're more likely to survive. Or if a warring faction comes over, maybe the larger monkey has a greater advantage to survive because it can fight better. Uh, so this looks pretty good for me right now. Uh, let's see number four. No variation in the color of fur, skin, or feathers of an individual in the population. I can't imagine where zero variation would be beneficial at all in any environment. In any environment at all. Uh, even the original environment. So that's not it. So definitely is it's number three. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If this helped, hit the like button. If you are watching from our channel, uh, then thanks for watching. Go to the next video starting now. If not, go to our channel, subscribe, and then go to the January 2017 Living Environment section. And all you can see all the videos in sequence. All right? Thanks for watching.